not only am I gonna have to clean that up, but I think I just broke the product. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Aiden Devaney. I'm here today with something that I've been finding very interesting. It's the Scott Barnes challenge, you know, where you go and you do Scott Barnes makeup on your face and you follow one of his tutorials. I'm totally excited because the results are phenomenal, are amazing, are life-changing, are miracle works. I need this in my life. I want to get into this video, but first, if you're not a subscriber here, hello, welcome. I'm Aiden. Nice to meet you. Please subscribe. Thanks. Give this video a like if you like my content. Make sure you hit that bell notification if I interested you enough to stay around so you'll never miss a video when I upload. Um, for those that don't know, Scott Barnes is J.Lo's makeup artist, like a resident makeup artist. Apparently he's been doing her makeup for years and he's the one who developed the J.Lo Glow. If you're not familiar, I mean... Several videos, movies, several pictures of J.Lo with the J.Lo Glow and that's all due to Scott Barnes. So I'm excited. And I'm very curious if his techniques work on black women because it seems to be geared towards people who are not of like darker skin tones. This all started when he did Tati's makeup. I don't know if you guys know Tati Westbrook. I mean, if you don't know, you must be living under a rock because she's like YouTube's drama queen. And it's never happened. But also, great reviewer. Gotta give her that. He did her makeup in one of her videos and that video got like so many millions of views, it's crazy. But then people started redoing the makeup look and created the Scott Barnes challenge. I don't know if it's really called that. I think I'm just calling it that because I don't know, it should be called that, I'm just saying. I'm not judging you because I think you're an innovator. We have several people redoing the look. I got inspired by this black YouTuber who did the look. And I actually never finished her video because I didn't want to see if it worked on black people's skin. I'm like, I want to do it myself. But I'll link her video down in the description box below so you can check it out. And then once I'm done with my video, I'm definitely going to look at her video and see how her look came out as well because, yeah. So that kind of inspired me to do this look. Um, and then I just started seeing other people doing it as well, but they were all white girls. So no shade to white girls. You're all beautiful if you buzz. You're not black. Other girls are, are beautiful as well, but for black women, I don't know. I feel like the makeup game is so different. Like we have to like choose our, our products and colors wisely. Otherwise we'll be out in these streets looking cray. And I'm really excited to have more women of darker skin tones doing this challenge because it kind of shows that it's versatile. It can work on people of color of all shades. You know what I'm saying? Without further ado, let's get into it. I did a whole Sephora haul in preparation for this video. I'm trying a lot of products that I've never, ever in my life thought I would buy. Um, from Pat McGrath to, you know, Urban Decay to all kinds of different things. So I'm really excited. So let's get into this video. Let's see what Scott Barnes is doing. I'll link the video down below so you can follow along and do this yourself. But this is the Hustler makeup tutorial. Obviously, he's not using JLo in this video, but he's using a girl who looks very similar to JLo and it's like almost creepy. So. Okay, so, so it looks like he's starting with contour, no makeup, like no foundation. It looks like he starts off with contour first, just to kind of like frame the face, he said. Um, I've never seen this done, so I'm very curious. Um, so let me get my concealer and stuff like that out, and let's get this done. So he starts with the forehead. The model that he's using in this video asked, do you know me start with the forehead? And he's like, yeah, it's just kind of just frame the face. When they do pages, just kind of like spread it on his there. It looks like he's using like just a fluffy brush like a really dense kind of like fluffy brush to do that with. 
So, and then he looks like he's also using a cream. Also, shout out to this model's skin. Like, her skin is like flawless. It looks like, I don't know, maybe they use products. They really didn't explain what the prepping of the skin was. It kind of just went from him talking about the movie and how, how they set up for the movie to him going right into the makeup. Um, but her skin looks really dewy and glowy. I feel like right now my skin also looks really dewy and glowy, but I do have a product for max glowiness and I want to use that product in this video today. So I don't care if it doesn't call for it, I'm going to do it anyway. The product I have is the Super Goop Glow Screen. Looks fantastic. It is a sunscreen in addition to being a primer and it's going to make your skin glow from within on the outside. It's 40 SPF and PA++, which means it's going to help protect you against environmental stuff, as well as the UVA rays, which are the aging rays, if you didn't know. The product is a chemical sunscreen with the Ava Benzones and stuff like that. So if you're kind of iffy on chemical sunscreens, then I understand, but I personally like and have no problem with chemical sunscreens. It's supposed to be a makeup gripping primer. So we'll see how that works. It also is supposed to give you a dewy glow to your skin because it has hyaluronic acid and other goodies like niacinamide and arginine. I will say I am a fan of Supergoop's products. Um, I first was introduced to them when I was looking for like a powder sunscreen, but that's what the product looks like. It's uh, a beige color. So I'm very curious to see how that translates on my skin. Um, I don't think that you should use this as your primary source of sun protection just because you're not going to more than likely use enough of this to satisfy your sun protection needs. I mean, just look how much I use just right now. That actually isn't enough. So I would also suggest using um, a base layer of sunscreen and then using this on top of that sunscreen. Just you know, for ultimate protection. That glow though, yes! Although I will say my other sun protection that I'm kind of comparing this to like mentally, it kind of gives me a very similar effect. And it's only like five bucks. <laughs> wow, that looks really nice. Okay, super goop. I'm not gonna lie, we were kind of iffy on her because of the color, but wow, no, the color doesn't even make a difference. It just leaves this nice, like, luminous, dewy finish, and I can, I can vibe with that, like, period. Period! So now I'm just putting it on my forehead, because this is where he started on the model. And I'm just using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Stick Foundation in the color Cool Earth. And I'm really getting it in my hairline because we don't want any splotchiness, any craziness going on there. And um, it looks like he's not putting it in any particular format or way. It looks like he stops right here on the temple, right where I'm stopping. So that's where I'm stopping. And he's just kind of blending it right in here all up in her hairline sis she gonna be washing makeup out of her hairline for days and so am i apparently oh in case you were wondering the brush i'm using is the real techniques buffing brush all right so that looks about how he has his so let's move forward it looks like he went in with a flat brush and he's now contouring the cheek and this brush is the contouring brush by elf I absolutely love this brush. It's amazing. Oh, look, I'm doing like a, a Kamehameha wave. Um, I'm playing with different things with my camera, with the camera uh, distance and stuff like that. So let me know how this looks. Since the camera is further away from me, it takes a minute for it to like kind of focus on the smaller things. So let me know what you think in the comments below, girl, what you think of this camera lens. So let's see what he's doing here. He's just doing that, and then he's just blending this down here, and it looks like he's just connecting this. this 
And like, he is like going in with the contour sis. And he's bringing it almost, almost to her mouth. It's very draggish, if I'm honest. So I can understand why this isn't probably for every day. So I'm trying to think because he almost went like this, starts like bumps the corner of her mouth. So my corner starts right there. So I'm gonna go like that and kind of angle up. You know, my cheekbone kind of starts like right here and kind of goes. Okay, yeah, okay. I'm seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> So now he's going underneath the chin, the jaw, almost like outlining it, like a comic outline, that's what I mean. It's so crazy because I just saw what he's using. The brush he's using almost looks like a paintbrush. What the hell is even that? Does my jaw look defined? Like, oh, he's oh, really painting that on. And then he's kind of bringing it down. He's leaning it down this way. Sometimes I use it like a little bit of 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 a little brush like this. This is the Bobbi Brown brush and now he's just kind of going underneath the lip area. I'm assuming this is to make your lips look bigger. I already have big lips but whatever. I think it's funny. He said he doesn't like uh, lips that are that look fake and are, are overly plumped up and I'm like don't you have your lips done? Pat? And I oh Now it looks like he went in with a smaller brush. I'm just using the e.l.f. Artistry brush, the pencil brush, and I'm just going in on the top lip. See my lips look bigger? The guy doing her hair sounds so congested. <laughs> I kind of want to give him like a nose decongestant. <laughs> Honestly, now that I'm looking in the mirror with the contour, you can really see the sun glow shining through. It almost looks like I already have on highlighter. But speaking of highlighter, we're going to go in with the Pat McGrath Labs Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Corrector and Concealer. I'm super excited to try this. Um, I've never tried a Pat McGrath product before, so this is my first time and like girl beyond beyond i love the packaging on this it feels it just feels luxury for 36 dollars though which is which is what i think this costs if you can see you get this cute packaging this feels heavy like i think this is actually glass and not plastic you get that little applicator right there to get into those little tight spaces and you get the famous Pat McGrath, you know, I thought I've been saying Pat McGrath this whole time. I've been saying Pat McGrath, right? You get the Pat McGrath formula, which is revolutionary, which is amazing, which has been game changing for women of color in this game because of the formula, the formulator who formulated for Pat McGrath. But anyway, I digress, I know accolades, let's get into the video. All right, so it looks like he takes the concealer and he puts it underneath the eye and then goes around the nose and goes like directly underneath the eye and then kind of brings it out here. And he doesn't ever like reapply, like reapplicate the, the applicator. So he just kind of just goes in. So he starts out here. This feels really nice. It feels like really like cushiony. Looks like he goes under here. And he just kind of does it like haphazardly. Like he really doesn't do it with any type of precision. I'm liking this product so far. It feels really good on the skin. It almost feels like a like it's really air whipped and cushiony. 
He did a little stripey here. Again, he didn't add any, he didn't dip back into the product. He just did this. And then for the forehead, he did the typical like, boom, boom. All right, so he kind of very gingerly oh. <laughs> went in and brought this down. Very gingerly. Then he takes just a simple brush like this. Like I said, I'm using the Bobbi Brown and he pats the concealer into submission. But it looks like he's on the nose, he kind of brushes. Ooh, pause. Look at this, look at this Pat McGrath. She is getting in, letting have with that silky smooth satin finish, girl. Like, what? What? I'm very confused why this concealer had such lackluster reviews. A lot of people were saying that, you know, there weren't they weren't here for it. But um she's cute though. I like it. Oh, that's such a beautiful finish. It makes my skin look so soft and smooth. Maybe I'm just because I never buy like expensive like concealers like this. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is, but she's gorgeous. Oh. I'm literally doing exactly what he's doing in the video. It looks like he sweeps under here and he pats here and then kind of sweeps under here and just kind of works like that and then pats all in here. And it's so cute. Um, apparently Jennifer calls this the cat and foot, the kitten foot. It kind of does look like a little cat foot, which cats have the cutest feet. Like, can we get into this really quick? Like how cute cat paws are. Way cuter than dog, than dog paws. Period! 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 I didn't, as you saw, I, I worked on the eyes first because that's what they did uh, in the video. But the concealer all kind of went on around the same time. Look how easily that this is still moving and blending and full coverage, full coverage. I'm speechless, bye. I'm standing for Mother Pat um, because it even says in the packaging, it's mother approved, I love it. Um, but it's, this is such a great concealer, like what? What? Also, pause, I'm noticing he did something. I didn't even see him do this. Like, when did he do this? It looks like he put some concealer right here because that area is like hella bright. So it looks like he put concealer there and connected it with the chin. And I don't know, maybe I was talking and I didn't see him do it, but he did it. So yeah, pause. I also feel like he did something to the nose or maybe I'm, because I saw him starting to like blend out the nose contour and then all of a sudden it came, it switched scenes and it was back to being dark again. So I don't know when that happened, but Auntie Pat says she is, she's working with these, uh with this and she's not blending into oblivion and she's not like getting muddy and mixing in with the other, like with the contour color. Even though I'm getting dangerously close to them both, I'm just able to kind of like sculpt out my contour with Auntie Pat's uh, concealer and the colors aren't getting muddied and mixing, which is amazing. Also in the video, he's using like, a highlight or on her face like it's much more 
lighter than her skin tone um obviously to pull things forward md25 right md25 is more my actual shade um so honestly it looks like i already just have foundation on so i'm going to go in with the nyx cosmetics can't stop won't stop concealer and i'm just going to go in the under eye area just to kind of lighten it up because this concealer is much lighter than anti pats and it's going to give me that brightening effect that scott is doing on the model i'm not going to go too too heavy with it i'm just going to kind of Re retrace the steps in this area. And that's it. I'm over here like, flaw where? Poor who? Don't know her. Because um, this looks amazing and flawless. I see why Jackie Aina always recommends that you um, layer your foundation or that you layer your concealers i can see the benefit now because it is absolutely beautiful and he said that you can wear a lighter version of this like in your everyday life but honestly this doesn't feel like it looks crazy maybe because i'm surrounded by a bunch of studio lights and i'm just looking in the monitor and it doesn't look like super duper bad but I don't know, it looks pretty good to me. I'd wear this out. How's it looking, you guys? I look crazy, I know. All right, so now we're going over the whole look with foundation. Also, I forgot to mention that I'm using the concealer MD25 in the Pat McGrath. I also have MD24 because it's a little more red and I feel like that could be used as a good corrector, but honestly, I don't feel like I need a corrector with this because it's like super full coverage and it's like blocking out anything that I would be worried about as far as like dark spots are concerned so hello I love it so the foundation that I have today I'm trying a new foundation it's from Bite Beauty is that focusing I can't tell if it's focusing because I don't have my glasses on <laughs> It's a new product. I've never tried it before. It's from Bite Beauty. It's their Change Maker Supercharge My Cellular Foundation Formula. Um, it's supposed to have a lot of like amazing goodies in it, so that's exciting. It's in the color D155. They claim it's the skin-like finish that you that you crave, but the clean formula that you deserve. And it's a medium coverage foundation, which perfect because I feel like. I'm covered enough. I probably could have even went with a lighter like coverage than this, but I wanted to give this a try. It has goodies like sunflower seed oil and other moisturizers that are gonna make the skin feel amazing. There's even writing on the inside of the box, interesting. So it comes in a tube, which I'm kind of a fan, like low key of tube uh, foundations, just because it kind of gives you the opportunity to get all of the foundation, all of it. All of it out of the product container. The instructions uh, recommend that you kind of squeeze the bottle. I'm gonna give it a shake as well, I guess, just to kind of get all the ingredients kind of like mixed up in there. And it's not a cream foundation like Scott likes and recommends, but it is a liquid, so close enough, right? So I just put, just a, I just put a little bit on my hand like that, and I'm using the dual fiber brush and it just looks like old boy was going over the lighter areas it looks like he's like stippling but also swiping like like light smoke like light strokes but then he also brings it down I'm not sure I like the fragrance of the Bite Beauty foundation. It's really strong. It's almost like a perfume. But that finish though, it's gorgeous. Oh, that is beautiful. Oh, wow. That is gorgeous. 
I kind of like my uh, foundation products, my makeup products. I prefer them not to have a fragrance if possible, just because, I don't know. For me, a fragrance hasn't been a problem like thus far in my, you know, 25 years, um, multiple times of living. Fragrance hasn't been a problem for my skin, but that doesn't mean that like, it never will be a problem for my skin, you know what I'm saying? And so I prefer to use things that don't have a fragrance just because I feel like it's a safer bet on the skin. For the skin, you know, you're not possibly going to run into issues later. And I mean, sometimes allergies, like allergic reactions can be very damaging to the skin. You definitely don't want to have that. And people can develop uh, like fragrance dermatitis, fragrance sensitive dermatitis or something like that, where your skin just starts reacting for no reason to fragrance. And it's like, but what? I've never had this problem before. Cause you know, our body renews itself every seven years, so they say. So you could start developing fragrant, uh, you can start developing allergies late, late in life. Know what I mean? Sis? So I did find the smaller version of the duo brush and it looks like he's just going in with that and he's kind of like stippling. It looks like he's just like kind of like blending. And so now it's a part two that I have to watch to make sure that I'm getting all the gigs. So let's go to part two.